Hey friends, welcome to the Women's Day Special Limelight in association with Govamania. You know friends, I'm really in limelight today because I'm going to talk to six most influential women of Goa. A woman is the most powerful and beautiful creation of God. Behind our existence, there is a woman. But somewhere in our societies, women are still underestimated. We need to recognize and acknowledge them in the fields they are into. So today we are here to talk about six most influential entrepreneurs of Goa. Welcome to Limelight and I am so excited to meet you all today and let me tell you all, you all, you all are looking very stunning. Let's uh, come to the point and let's start with the topic for which we are here. So you all are into different fields and uh, you are creating a brave world out there. So I want to ask all of you all, you know, you can take turns and answer that how are you moving ahead digitally in your your own feet. So Rekha, the reason we are sitting here today and doing this is because you know that you'll be putting it out there and a whole lot of people will be watching yes. it and that's digital for you. Um, so being in a digital marketing space for me I can answer that question very well. Uh, it just helps us to be able to be seen, to be heard. It also helps us to get connected to the world which is so important. We love the fact that and we come from a generation that was maybe a couple of years before the digital revolution happened. So it is a big thrill for us to experience this, um, get the benefits of it, enjoy it, but at the same time try and warn our kids not to get too much into it. Yes, yes. So it means a lot to us to be able to be part of this digital revolution and the digital age. So if I can just add to what she said, uh, yeah, which when we started, we started with a world which was very much, uh, you know, hands-on and uh, everything to do with hands kind of a thing but right now you know that you it's been taken over by computers or be it AI and uh, the manufacturing sector that I come from is also things which you had to wait for longer are now done instantly like communication has come down to maybe a few seconds where you had to wait for days to come in so whatever you require across the world is at you in few seconds which is nice but at the same time it's quite alarming um, you know it's there are pros and cons to it but then if you look at it which way you want to go and how much you want to absorb from it is all left up to an individual yeah as an entrepreneur i can only say that uh, everything is being digitalized the way even we advertise it's now you have to be on social media otherwise you won't have your presence but uh, it's also that we are working 24 by 7 nowadays which earlier we didn't uh, like we used to work 9 to 5 now it is 24 by 7 even on Sundays so that way we have to also take a digital detox when we need it because we need to rest also so uh, basically it is like Sheetal has said it has advantages and disadvantages so but it's, it is a digital world today and that is the way forward Initially there were less opportunities uh, especially for women to explore and you know being in Goa, Goa is very small and traveling was difficult and uh, because of this digital platforms like social media, Facebook, Instagram, uh, women are coming out showing their talent and skills on social medias and they are able to uh, sell also at the same time and make some sort of income for themselves so it's making them strong and independent financially also and um, of course platforms are there to create more awareness uh, it's just that we should know how much is uh, you know good for us so that balance we need to understand and you know um, uh, I mean we, we need to take care of all those things and we are mature enough to 
uh, take our own decisions, right? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the digital world has made definitely a lot of difference and uh, Ayurveda has reached out to the world in a different way and it is giving a message of not only being healthy and active but also understanding the analysis part of it and especially as far as when science meets technology it is uh, creating a different world for people around by giving the reports just in seconds like you can communicate in seconds but also you can get your reports in seconds and that makes the treatment or the further things much easier but again uh, as health uh, we have to be really concerned how much to use and how much to go for it as a woman entrepreneur it's uh, it's a challenge for each one of us uh, to understand that uh, you know the time that we need to be on it and as a health professional, especially as women entrepreneurs, they are getting enough time even during pregnancy or even during babysitting, they can still practice being at home yes. as a woman. And I think that is the best that the digital platform has done to a woman. Uh, Asha ma'am, I want to ask you the next question. It, it's actually for all, but I want to specifically ask you, uh, since you work for NGOs and uh, you know, uh, social working more into that, uh, so, how is it uh, digitally helping the common women? So, uh, as I was telling you that uh, before social work was thought to be in good old days, Jhola uh, Latka Ke community, you had to go and you had to help people. But now, because of digital platform and post-COVID, we have seen that how it has brought everyone together and women sitting at home, they could showcase their talent, whatever they are producing. So they, they needed a platform, which digital platform has given them, you know. And even to scale up their business, if they want to scale up their business, it connects them to the wide world and they can get business sitting at home. Ma'am, uh, also I wanted to know, like, you know, Sia's group, the Go Womania, which we all know, is creating online uh, job opportunities for uh, everybody. Uh, as far as you are working in, in your individual fields, how are you uh, giving opportunities digitally to the women out there? Um, yeah, I think this platform has caught up. So. Uh, now with the last two years what we have seen is that work from home has become the concept and that is also taken forth so if you have a talent and if the talent if it's a woman entrepreneur and if she's your need and she has the talent and she's sitting somewhere maybe in Bangalore or Chennai you can easily work from there so you know the you need not have her to be back in into Goa and work from here so that concept which was not there earlier is caught up and people are finding their spaces, their homes and working from. That is one thing. Also it has made uh, uh, you know, the talent search more easier that when you throw it on uh, social media saying that you're looking for such particular uh, you know, uh, maybe this qualities or this qualification and you have so many people answering it within seconds you know that's the most important thing that you just it's an advertisement which you don't need to pay you just write it over insta or your social page or linden and you know that you are getting answers for it so you don't really have to go outside even your working cabin you are getting all those answered here uh, we uh, I'm the chairperson of Goa Chamber of Commerce and Industry Women's Wing. So basically we do a lot of programs and we involve other uh, women's group also. So basically um, we meet also physically and plus there's online presence. Online presence there are actually a lot of groups on Facebook like uh, Vocal for Local which has got thousands of people on the group. So what happens is if you offer any goods for sale or something then you get a lot of replies, you get a lot of connections, you can sell your goods, people are aware of what you're doing. Plus there are actually I would say digital and physical both connection is important because you have a lot of women's organizations who are doing this exhibition even we have done one asturi so there people can physically come and see your goods wherever whatever you are trying to sell what happened in the last two years of covid everything was digital but now it is digital combined with physical I would say this special episode of limelight is sponsored by Sanao International 
At Sanao International, you will find a range of centrally located flexible spaces, including executive video conference rooms designed especially for your business and educational needs. Our team will ensure every detail goes the way you want. So focus on making great happen. It's my personal doubt actually. You have so much of content and so much of uh, you know things coming up, Facebook, Insta, and even socially. Uh, as entrepreneurs and you are the ones who select people you know uh, you hire people you select people how do you choose amongst them you know they, because it is sometimes unnecessary things also going around on social media so reka just like the physical world i think the digital world we are getting more and more comfortable with using it and uh, you t- you you learn how to read body language across a screen you l- learn how to ask the right questions you learn how to reach out to other people and get references and uh, what we didn't learn earlier we've learned through covid saying these are the things that we need to know now to be able to digitally connect with somebody or digitally understand somebody across the screen so we are just learning new traits and your question while it is um <laughs> uh, very valid how will you even know whether it's true or no it's just a matter of saying that yes i'm i'm liking the feel that i'm getting from the person i like the vibe the person saying the right things i've done my background check and i'm just going to go for it and try out whether it's going to work with that person along with that as far as health industry is concerned um, digital platform has made a big revolution in in terms of getting consultants getting the equipments understanding the equipments understanding the demos otherwise people had to travel across the ocean to just give a demo of an equipment so this uh, platform is definitely giving a health industry a new look and a new era to uh, go forward at a faster pace My question to you Pallavi ma'am you are CA by profession and uh, a chef or uh, you have interest in cooking by choice uh, or that's your hobby how do you maintain both the careers yeah actually i'm a ca so basically i'm a finance director in you know in our family owned pharmaceutical company and uh, i am i wouldn't say a chef <laughs> but i love cooking and i'm i can say a sunday yeah sunday baker i would say So but we have a team we have a thing we have a bakery unit a desserts and more and we have a team who are experts in making cakes and other desserts So basically I try to balance both I also look after my professional duties as a CA and also look after my entrepreneurial journey and um, I think I'm doing a pretty good job at it at both of it right now <laughs> uh saying it's a balancing act for me to balance both the things together earlier when you started desserts and more it was uh, not everybody who was following their hobbies more everybody was going technically so what made you you know uh, start that since you were already established as a ca actually i never planned anything it just happened so i met a lady we had similar interests we decided to partner in the bakery business and then uh, i set it up as a thing a uh, bakery unit of our own company so it just happened actually i am not a long term planner i like doing short term planning but i am not a long term planner as such so it just happened and then uh, something started just falling into place something just one thing was connected to another one thing led to another and then slowly slowly we started expanding the desserts and more in the whole of goa earlier we were in north goa now we are in south goa also So it, now this digital medium is ex- ex- helping you expand yeah, even more. Yeah, uh, definitely. Because well. when I started, I started with the print medium. Uh, when I started with advertisements, but now then uh, along the line, uh, so many things have changed. Now everybody is on social media. So if you aren't, then you are missing out. Really missing out. So you need to be on Instagram, on Facebook, on WhatsApp. So you have to keep in touch with the customers. Tell them what your new products are. Uh, where are you and what you are what are your new offerings so that is a part of our entrep- uh, entrepreneurship journey now being on social media uh, ma'am uh, sheetal uh, now it's you uh, now you just tell us you are into fashion more of into fashion so uh, goa being a vibrant place uh, i should say inspiring you to be in this field or uh, your point of view to design clothes or style or whatever so i think inspiration comes from where you are and uh, what's yes. around you yes and goa has plenty to give so you don't need inspiration only from 
the sea and the sun but you know people around the colors around the carnivals the festivities that we do uh, yeah i do uh, clothing clothing is a part of it but uh, my major thing now i've moved is into composite manufacturing so where i am doing planters uh, you know which yes. are their pots and planters so which also the line basic is the same where it's designing which is instead of garments or clothes now i've gotten into a different media which is composites um it doesn't change much i just try to see what is there what is inspiring but at the same time it's not only inspiration that value what you're creating has to sell because the product what you're creating is not something which needs to be uh, you know just kept in a, in a showcase that few pieces are good but something like what you really need to create is what is appreciated and bought in the market so i feel the surrounding does inspire but more so over it should be your individuality to pick up that is what is inspiring and trying to convert it into a design which is aesthetically given out into the market so uh, you mean to say now that you are into designing so now you have come out with something which is uh, uh, different ideas of making pots and planters yeah okay, that's nice and uh, we have a wide range of it and if everybody likes it then definitely you know see ya we have met you we have spoken to you before you have already within a short span of time you have reached wide uh, audiences what is that you do you know to continue your reach to the people digitally i think i have attached a purpose you know whatever i'm doing today it's just because that i have a purpose and passion towards it and i love to uh, create and add value to people's lives that's what i believe in and uh, uh, you know uh, and i am like the most happiest person when i see somebody uh, growing or making some sort of uh, positive change in their life and last 4 5 years i have been interacting with many uh, women entrepreneurs and i've seen them uh, evolving too from startup to you know scale up kind of uh, their businesses own businesses so so i think um, for me first thing is i prepare i plan my day in advance so that i know what next to be done and uh, and i just go with the flow okay thank you sia thank you dr sneha so uh, as women we all have uh, many issues other than normal men we could say yes. uh, not comparing but uh, i'm just saying that we all have our own problems like in that way how is panchakarma beneficial to women yes the uh, the way you rightly said uh, as a women we undergo through different phases uh, it could be menarch which is puberty later on it could be giving birth to a child and after that menopause so these three phases to get them into balance to lead them into a seamless uh, you know uh, property of life which from one phase to another phase uh, just to go ahead without any problems during that transition phase uh, panchakarma is something it is a therapy which helps the body to detox and also get all the system into balance not only that it regenerates the whole uh, organ tissue blood circulation everything comes back into uh, normal uh, functioning and panchakarma why is it panchakarma because they are the five therapies vaman virechan basti rakta mokshan and nasya these five therapies are the therapies which help all the body systems to get into balance right now as you said women are suffering more because uh, if we say the pcod problem is alarming and it is a big uh, you know alarm for the country rather i should say that the percentage of pcod where it was hardly 5 out of 1 used to suffer from pcod but today it is 3 out of 5 uh, fertile women are suffering from pcod and which is leading to a major cause of infertility cancers different kinds of metabolic disorders 
where every each and every individual is fighting after the age of 40 so panchakarma is the lifeline for you to protect from all these diseases and as a woman it is definitely more important so that it helps you to go a long way Doctor, one more thing I wanted to ask. You have special inclination towards Mother Earth. That's also uh, a uh, topic which, which, which we should discuss uh, right now. What are the measures, special measures that you take towards it? Yes. So, uh, I definitely I have a special inclination towards Mother Earth and I think all the la all beautiful this. ladies sitting here also have because we uh, come up from the with the same wavelength. But, uh, for Mother Earth, I have uh, opened up a group called as Planet Speak, which is on Facebook. But apart from that, I have been um, getting engaged in different activities with the society like composting or uh, segregation of waste, uh, wetland preservation. Wetland preservation is something which is very important to take care of the biodiversity of our country and most of the times we do not realize this why we do not realize is we just take uh, you know take 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 from the resources yes. but we do not want to give it back so how do we give it back is only in the form of preservation and understanding the need of biodiversity just maintaining the ecosystem like specifically when you are even driving a car a small example when you are driving a car and if it is a lonely road don't honk simply because it is actually bothering the birds around the system where you are driving the car or it is actually bothering even the plants which are just blooming up. So this is how we, in a small way we can take care of biodiversity and I think awareness is very important as far as these small small issues are concerned. That's uh, a point which I think I even, I didn't know that even honking uh, uh, disturbs yes. the planet. So. I, th I think it's a social message for everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Sneha. Thank you. We move on to Asha, ma'am. Um, we are all curious to know about you. You are mostly into social working. And uh, what was it, uh, what was uh, one thing that made you choose this? Was it your uh, passion or was it your choice? Basically, I was a teacher. Mm -hmm. I have done my master's in sociology and I've done my PA also. But then uh, it so happened that teaching at that point of time that it was little monotonous and boring for me and I was looking for a change. And uh, in 1994, uh, my husband was doing a film on HIV AIDS and AIDS cell then, now it is called Goa State AIDS Control Society, they needed somebody with this background, Masters in Sociology. And my husband asked me, so I jumped at it and I entered the field of HIV AIDS. And uh, there was a project by uh, WHO, but it needed for me to work in the red light area. So my first work started in the infamous, that time, Baina. But um, there was a police station where a work clinic was based. And whenever we would visit the area, we would visit with team of people. Um, you can imagine in those days, HIV AIDS, to just pronounce AIDS, it yeah, was so it was scary yeah. and it was very difficult. And for a female to be attached to uh, this kind of, but it was very challenging. And that's what attracted to me because uh, I really, after that, there was no looking back. And I worked with several organizations, national and international, and it gave me, it changed my perspective towards the life. Definitely. Because working with these marginalized communities, uh, it taught me to be unbiased as a person. Uh, I feel that I grew, I learned something from them by being unbiased, by treating them as human beings. It is not them and us, it is, it is the circumstances with which people land up in certain situations and we have to be human and they need our help. So uh, there were female sex workers, there were intravenous drug users, 
homosexuals, transgenders, these are the high risk groups, truckers and migrants, uh, who are more at risk of HIV AIDS. So I had to work with them and then I'll just, in short I'll tell you, then uh, it all happens because of loss of livelihoods. I realized that because of livelihoods, people land up and uh, then I started my own NGO, Goa Livelihoods Forum and I'm working with the women. We have a project with the rural department and uh, we are into helping the self-help group women, creating livelihoods for them now. That's uh, very uh, hats off to you, ma'am. Uh, to you know now uh, that we have everything digitally, that time to go and work with them physically, physically would have been a big uh, challenge for you. So, and uh, what is the one issue that you think is uh, needs the uh, the most attention now in the field that you're working? Any specific? When you think about women, uh, we are in Goa and we are very lucky to be here. But our country is so vast and there is so much happening in other parts of the state. And where women are concerned, um, there is honor killing happening, there are rapes happening, there is child abuse happening. So much because <clears throat> we are not educating properly our girl children. We have to, it is not only about women, we have to engage men and boys, we have to teach them how to be good sons, how to be good husbands, how to be good father, how to take care of their families. Because many a times it happens that women are left to fend for themselves and for their families. So if we want to make them capable and if we want that they should be able to decide for themselves, then Education and real education and awareness is very much needed so that they are safe. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. It was uh, nice to know you even more deeply. Now we move on to Rina, ma'am. So, what are the challenges that you have faced building up your brand that is uh, Cherry Tree Concepts? Sureka, thanks for that question because it's it's uh, something that emotionally kind of moves me. When I started out, I was um, well into my 40s and the industry that I was in was about the younger generation. It was uh, the generation that was faster, that had everything on the tips of their fingers and I came from a background where we, I remember sitting at the back of trucks and going and putting up hoardings. I remember sitting with vendors in the middle of the night, making those boards and flyers and getting things printed. Uh, that was the non-digital era. So um, for me, starting out in this industry, uh, that challenge was there that, am I too old for it? Will I always be catching up? Will I always be uh, less than what the next generation is all about? But then at some point I realized, and I built my confidence on it, I worked on my confidence, and I realized that they did not have the exposure and the experience uh, across so many different industries, so many different sectors and the thousands of people that I had spoken to before in my career and that kind of uh, just became a non-challenge after that and I moved on from there. Okay, your uh, company, your brand, uh, what has it specifically done uh, for the women in Goa? Anything specific? Um, so, um, without meaning to, I uh, attracted the women audience a lot in my early years, in my early uh, days of the business. Maybe it's because of the way we connect as women. We just understand each other and I think I've got, uh, I mean I'm grateful for that as a trait that I have where I'm able to understand, connect and feel comfortable and make the other person feel comfortable. So I did work with a lot of women entrepreneurs. I could just understand their pain areas better because I was also in that phase having to balance family, having to balance insecurities as a woman, having to do so many things besides being an entrepreneur. Um, so that connect was there and not only locally, but I was able to also reach out to clients uh, internationally. 
uh, women clients and say that yes I can help you build your brand so uh, something really interesting happened during COVID there was a lady who was running a business in Dubai and she reached out saying uh, Reena after 22 years I'm thinking I should shut down my business because uh, people used to come physically to my location for their uh, communication skills classes now maybe I need to close down my institute but if you tell me that digital marketing works and digital online classes work maybe we can discuss it further uh, today they're still on and they're doing really well and I'm grateful and glad that women started talking a lot more uh, connecting digitally and saying can you help me out so yes I have been doing that <laughs> on this Women's Day special episode of Limelight uh, is there anything, any message you all want to give the women out there? I can say that uh, for a woman, be strong. You can achieve whatever you want in your life. Just go ahead and do it. I feel that uh, you have to just take a step. Uh, that one step or the first step is the most important. I think the second foot follows it and you start walking. Well, I say that uh, courage comes from the adversities that you go through in your life. So just be prepared and accept the things that comes to your life. Life will still go on. Women are the pillars of the family as well as the country. And I think women should take care of their self by doing AMC, annual maintenance care for themselves, which is very much necessary. Yeah, I feel that each one of us, we have some hidden talents and we should recognize those talents and we should not give up. I believe that uh, we need to pick up confidence from wherever we can get it, mostly from inside our heads, but also from the people around us. I think it's uh, one of the most important things that as women we need to pick up because uh, it's something that holds us up and makes us res resilient like Sia always says and it helps us become empowered, empowered not only uh, to help ourselves but to reach out to society as well. Okay, thank you so much ladies for coming to this show, this special episode of Limelight and uh, this is our special token of love that you all the way came here and took out time for us. So, thank you so much. Thank you. A woman can achieve heights, but what is the motivation? It's only when one woman supports the other woman or one woman is inspired by the other woman. I just want to say this to all the ladies. The more we use and show our strength, the more it will be beautified. Think about it. Deo Go get it.